In this video, we'll look at examples on calculating the upfront premium of a CDS contract. So the first thing that you always have to check is uh, if the investor in the question or the example is buying the protection or are they selling the protection. And the next thing you will have to check is uh, what is the uh, fixed coupon on the CDS contract and what is the CDS spread. Now, for exam purposes, uh, if it's a high yield issuer, the fixed coupon on the CDS contract will be 5%. And if it's an investment grade issuer, then the fixed coupon will be 1%. Now, in my first example, uh, the investor buys protection on a 10 year CDS contract for a high yield issuer with a notional of $20 million. The CDS spread is 460 basis points and the effective spread duration of the CDS is uh, 7.8. Calculate the upfront premium and determine whether the investor pays or receives the upfront premium. And the fixed coupon on the high yield CDS contracts uh, would be 5%. First thing that we have to do is uh, the formula would be uh, for the upfront premium, that's the fixed coupon minus the CDS spread multiplied by the effective spread duration of the CDS. The fixed coupon in this case will be 5%, the CDS spread will be 4.6%, then we multiply by 7.8. That gives us 3.12% of the CDS notional. Or we can say that it is 0.0312 per 1 unit notional. Now if you scale it from 1 unit to $20 million, so if you multiply by $20 million, the upfront premium will be $624,000. So that's the calculation. The next part is how do you know whether the investor in this case would pay or receive the upfront premium? And in this case, the investor is the party that's buying the protection. Now, you would have to look at it, uh, look at the transaction from a, a fair. How do you make it fair? So in, in other words, right, in this example, the investor would have to pay a coupon or a premium of 5% throughout the life of the CDS contract to the protection seller. While the CDS spread is only 4.6%. You can think of it as you are paying an insurance premium of 5%, but the risk that you're exposed to now is only 4.6%. The investor would be overpaying the, the premium in this case. You are paying more than the risk that you are hedging. So it's kind of like not fair or imbalanced to the protection buyer or the investor in this case. So since it's imbalanced, how do we balance it up? How do we make sure that it's fair for the protection buyer or in this case, the investor? So therefore, the, uh, the investor or the protection buyer in this case would have to receive the upfront premium from the protection seller. Okay, so think of it from that point of view, it'll be, uh, it'll be much easier. Now, what if, okay, let's say if we go to the second example, still the same investor who buys the protection, but let's say that the CDS spread at the contract initiation is 530 basis points, and this is higher than the fixed coupon. Now, if we do redo the calculation with that 5.3%, 5, 5 the upfront premium would be negative 2.34% of the notional or negative 0.0234 per one unit notional, and if you scale it based on the $20 million notional, the upfront premium would be negative 468000 Now, this time around, because the CDS spread is higher and the investor only has to pay 5%. So now it's a good deal because you're only paying a 5% premium throughout the life of the contract while the, but while the CDS spread at initiation of the contract is 5.3%. So it's kind of like you're paying a low, lower premium than the risk that you are hedging against. So for the seller now, it's, it's imbalanced, okay? It's, it's not fair because the seller is uh, at, at a risk of uh, exposure. So to make it fair for the protection seller, the protection buyer or the investor in this case would have to pay the upfront premium to the protection seller. And what if the CDS spread is 500 basis points, which is the same as a fixed coupon? Then the upfront premium will be equals to zero. In this case, uh, there will be no one uh, that's paying the upfront premium or receiving the upfront premium. Now let's change the question and let's say that the investor is the one that's selling protection on the same contract, same notional. Okay, and uh, let's say this is uh, the CDS spread is 460 basis points to start. Uh, this is the same as our first example, but we change the 
the, the side of the transaction. So now the upfront premium will still be equals to uh, $624,000, but now the investor is the protection seller. In this case, uh, as, as I said before, uh, because the protection buyer will be paying a higher premium than uh, the risk that they're exposed to, which is 4.6%. So in this case, it's not fair for the protection buyer. So protection buyer must receive a upfront premium from the protection seller. And the investor being the protection seller in this case, okay, the, uh, the investor would have to pay the upfront premium to the protection buyer. Okay, so it's always important to check uh, which side is the investor on. And uh, again, with the sale protection example, if the CDS spread is higher at 500, 530 basis points uh, at the contract initiation, and uh, the calculation is the same as before, okay, the upfront premium is negative 468,000. Now, this, is, this transaction is kind of like not fair to the protection seller at the contract initiation uh, because the contract, the, the C, uh, protection seller is only receiving 5% while the CDS spread is at 5.3%, uh, at it's much higher risk but you're getting like 5%. So it's not, it's not fair for the protection seller or the investor in this case. So the investor should receive okay, that upfront premium from the protection buyer. And uh, in the last example, if the CDS spread is 500 basis point or 5%, which is the same as a fixed coupon, then the upfront premium will be zero. In this case, uh, the protection seller or the investor will, be not, will not be receiving or paying the upfront premium.